हे गाइज व्हाट्सएप सो दिस इज द हाई सीरीज अगेन आई एम कंटिन्यूइंग विद इट बिकॉज यू गाइज आर ऑसम एंड यू गाइज डिजर्व एवरी बिट ऑफ इट बिकॉज ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ योर पेपर विल बी कमिंग फ्रॉम इट इन प्रिलिम्स एग्जामिनेशन प्लस फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ योर मेन्स माइट बी कमिंग फ्रॉम दिस सो बिवेयर एंड वॉच दीज वीडियोज दिस विल द पार्ट वन पॉइंट सेवन सो फॉर पार्ट वन टू सिक्स प्लीज वॉच द प्रीवियस वीडियोज इट इज प्रेजेंटेड बाई मी दिस इज द यूट्यूब चैनल अन अकेडमी Uh, if you have any questions any doubts any delusions any delirium which are pestering you which are bothering you don't know where to ask you can type it in the comment section even if i don't respond does not mean that i have not read it it simply means i'll be including it in the coming videos this is a facebook page facebook.com/romansani.official uh, do like share and subscribe the video so moving forward uh, it is related to the food web last time i stopped at food chain so a food web is consisting of all the interconnected and overlapping food chains so this is what exists in nature not a food chain each organism in an ecosystem is part of multiple food chains let's assume you are human beings so if you eat plants you come at t2 if you eat let's say rabbit you come at t3 and if you eat mm, let's say cows or buffalo again you come at t3 if you have eat let's say dog if you are very adventurous then you come at t4 is so that understood even if you eat chicken you come at t4 because chicken feeds on insects insects feed on smaller insects maybe anything grass if it this feeds on smaller insects you actually come at t5 so every food chain is one possible path that energy and nutrients may take as they move through the ecosystem it's a hypothetical concept more the complex the food web more will be the ecosystem stable because if one or two species might become extinct food web will be able to compensate for the nutrition and energy transfer however if the species number is very very limited that is food web is not complex entire ecosystem will collapse that is ecosystem with simple food webs are less stable and they are extremely vulnerable and they are prone to extinction and collapse is that understood so make sure that as the complexity of food web increase it's a good thing so is the soil food web uh, just see there are plants okay so their plants can be eaten by nematodes they can be eaten by fungi they can be converted into organic matter and which are eaten by bacteria now bacteria can be eaten by a protozoa similarly fungus can be eaten by a nematode now protozoa can be eaten by a nematode then nematode can be eaten by an arthropod like an insect nematode means uh, worm arthropods are uh, usually insect 75% of them then arthropods can be eaten by bigger arthropods which are predators so the second trophic level will includes pathogens parasites third trophic level will include grazers fourth trophic predators and finally they can be eaten by birds birds get in eaten by snake and the cycle continues so can you see the complexity level similarly this is again very familiar example this is let's say a producer eaten by a snail snail is eaten by a fish fish is eaten by duck duck is eaten by hawk similarly snake can be eaten by hawk snake can eat rat rat can eat insects rat can also like similarly fish can be eaten by frogs and so it's a very very complicated kind of a network as the complexity increases it's a good because it's less prone to extinction similarly we have this concept i wanted you to know this concept it's called as negative feedback mechanism how does it work uh, any stimulus is provided so it is sensed by a sensor which controls it by a factor so a factor either gives a positive stimulus if it is decreasing so it gives a positive stimulus if it is increasing and going out of proportion it gives a negative stimulus how does it work let's say your body temperature because of outside heat or otherwise you get a heat stroke and it becomes 41 degree so temperature increased so nerve cells in skin and brain will be able to uh, detect it and the temperature regulatory center in brain which is hypothalamus and it will cause sweat glands to release sweat so it will give a negative feedback and the temperature will down so negative feedback is actually a good term it's not a bad term positive feedback on the other end is a very very uh, vicious cycle so positive is equals to vicious that is bad uh, most of the time negative is equals to a virtuous cycle that is a good cycle similarly hypothalamus releases gonadotropin hormone which affects pituitary pituitary releases fsh and lh it acts on gonads which releases testosterone or estrogen in case of males and females respectively which gives negative feedback to pituitary which stops releasing fsh and lh and which gives negative feedback to hypothalamus which stops releasing gnrh this is how negative feedback works so there are two studies of negative feedback homeostasis is the first term given by walter cannon 
uh, if you can remember name it's okay otherwise no problem so most of the natural and biological systems including ecosystem always remain in a dynamic equilibrium this is the most important part dynamic equilibrium give and take constantly takes place with the help of a negative feedback cycle this is the keyword so in ecosystem if any change occurs in any trophic level other trophic level will react and compensate accordingly these are the keywords cybernetics is a transdisciplinary approach for exploring regulatory systems their structures constraints possibilities it can be applied to biology and any engineering maths whatever you want to call it vehicular studies anything so it is useful when a system is being analyzed is involved in a closed signaling loop where system generates some change and that change provides feedback which triggers a system change so this was about negative feedback now we move on to ecological pyramids what are ecological pyramids have you seen these kind of drawings uh, you must be familiar with by them right now so these are called as ecological pyramid this is t1 t2 t3 and t4 so this is a, a straight ecological pyramid it's also also called as trophic pyramid because it's representing trophic so it is a graphical representation obviously you can see a graph it is designed to show a particular character of ecosystem so assume it's showing number or biomass or energy so these are the three character which it can show with respect to a particular trophic level so the number will be shown here with respect to a particular trophic level so it helps in simplifying the food chains and food web and help us in better understanding of a given ecosystem so it is basically of three types first is the pyramid of number you can see let's assume these are the producers grass they are let's say 6 million uh, then there are let's say 10,000 deer which are feeding on it then let's say there are 100 hyenas which are feeding on it and let's assume there are 10 lions so this is a typical example of savanna so the increasing number means upright or straight pyramid it is usually upright example in grassland ecosystem it is depicting total number of organisms vis-a-vis -vis its trophic level can you see these are the trophic levels on y-axis and on x-axis we have number inverted in there are two exceptions of inversion first is uh, tree ecosystem so in tree ecosystem there will be uh, one tree this is one tree okay then we have uh, let's say lakhs of insects are dependent on it so these are insects and then there are various birds feeding on it and then there are smaller birds so it is uh, not quite inverted but it is not upright also so it is a mixed kind of a pyramid however in case of a parasitic ecosystem it is 100 percent inverted uh, so there will be let's say there is one dog on which there are thousands of fleas on which there are hundreds and millions of protozoans so this is a typical example of an inverted this is t1 this is t2 and this is t3 so this is a typical example of an inverted ecosystem it is parasitic ecosystem of numbers we are talking about numbers pyramid of numbers similarly there is pyramid of biomass it is usually upright uh, let's say the wheat will be having 600 million tons of wheat is there then the biomass of cows is let's say 50 million tons it's huge then we have let's say lions on the top very very few of them let's say uh, 10 tons of lions are there then 100 tons of zeep some hyenas or wild dogs are there so it is almost upright all the time it depicts the total biomass available at each trophic level however exceptions are there so it is inverted in case of aquatic ecosystem what happens in aquatic ecosystem is the phytoplanktons they reproduce at a very 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 rapid turnover rate so their mass is very very small so let's assume this is the phytoplanktons then we have zooplanktons on top of it they are also having less mass then we have like uh, small fishes let's assume this and then we have huge fishes so this biomass it goes inverted the pyramid of biomass is inverted in case of aquatic ecosystem please make sure because the zooplanktons are consuming them at a very very fast pace and themselves are also consumed at a very very rapid pace then we have pyramid of energy there are absolutely no exceptions of this so assume 1 million uh, is coming so out of this 1 million 0.5 million is PAR that is photosynthetically active radiation out of this 0.5 million 2% is being utilized so 2% of 5 lakh is 10,000 so this is being fixed by primary producers then 10% is transferred 1000 then 10% is 100 then 10% is 10 so these are tertiary secondary primary consumers 
there is no exceptions it is always upright because why it is always upright have you ever thought because the flow of energy is always unidirectional this is the key point this they will ask you in mcqs so 90 percent of energy is dissipated passing to a higher trophic level it represents the productivity of an ecosystem so higher this conversion higher the productivity so in this example one percent of sunlight is fixed by autotrophs and then ten percent of energy is transferred upwards at every trophic level so starting with a million joules worth of sunlight only 10 joules reaches a top consumer this is also one of the reason why the number of trophic levels is limited to four or five maximum then what there are certain limitations of ecological pyramids like everything in life there are certain limitations of everything so it does not accommodate food, food web obviously can't show a food web it does not take into account the same species belonging to two or more trophic level so this is the most important let's say man is there so where will you count it man here or here or here or here obviously you can't count him here but you can count him anywhere of here so this is a problem with omnivores then we have saprophytes they are also called as decomposers or osmotrophs they are not given any place so you will not find bacteria having a place then there are certain rules uh, regarding the ecology so i'll be talking about these rules in brief first is the allen's rule it shows that as the mammals in the cold environments uh, lose rap heat very rapidly so the extremities are very very small in colder region and large in warmer region most of these rules are applying only to birds and mammals why have you ever thought about this because birds and mammals are what i called as urethermal so they are what we called as regulator that is their body temperature remains in a range for us it remains between 36.5 to 37.5 this is the range if it goes below this and higher than this then there is a problem so if we are in colder region the extremities tend to be very very small this is allen's rule bergman's rule says body size of birds and mammals is large in cold region see why it is large just see here if the body size decreases the volume of an organism falls drastically because the surface area is let's say a square while volume is a cube a is one of the sides so if a decreases then surface area almost remains the same as compared to volume so surface area to volume ratio becomes very very high in small mammals let's say rat mice etc so the heat loss is too much and too rapid for them to survive in colder region so they are rarely found in polar and subpolar regions because body size of birds and mammals has to be large in cold region and small in warmer regions for the same reasons then jordan's rule says fishes of cold water possess more number of vertebra then we have glogger's rule please do not remember these names they are absolutely worthless for you but you have to remember what is the rule saying mammals and birds are more darker in color in hot areas because of the pigmentation region and finally birds in cold region have narrow wings and in warm have broader so if you have broad wings obviously the heat loss will be very very fast while if you have if you are in cold region then you need to have narrow wings so that the heat loss is very very minimal so uh, this was it guys so if you want me to make more videos on high yield series of environment and ecology or any other series we have right now world history series uh, i am planning to start economy and geography series but since no one is interested so i have not started similarly we have international relations series not started till date essay series is also not started and finally uh, polity series i did made four videos but you guys are not interested so that is also gone the dustbin so if yes if yes is the reason if you want me to start any of these series is so do like the video below and comment on the post on my fb page uh, you guys are awesome so it's appreciated that you do indulge it's a democratic process and i do only what you guys want me to do so if you still have any query whatsoever you can come to my facebook page facebook.com slash romansani.official you can also tweet to me at my twitter handle at romansani this is a youtube channel and academy do subscribe share and like the video uh, thank you for watching the video have an awesome day